Hey everybody, welcome to our Let's Paint Live and we are going to teach you how to paint a painting in about an hour. We're super excited for you to be with us tonight. My name is Kirsten and I am a creator here at Plaid in the Content Studio. And we are always just super excited about our online classes live here on Facebook. We're also, also live on YouTube, but we're just super excited about all of the people that we have taught to paint. We've get, we get families, we get kids, we get beginners, we even get experts that just want to have fun and do something relaxing for an hour um, during their week. So tonight we are going to paint um, summer, spring. Everyone is super excited about the change of the seasons here at Plaid. So we are gonna do a group of little hummingbirds, um, some wildflowers, really a loose abstract background, lots of different techniques. I love to focus on the techniques. We'll be doing um, some simple stroke work, but we'll be doing dry brush. We'll be base coating with a dark color. So just really great techniques that you guys can use in paintings that you do again in the future. Um, so we are gonna be doing this hummingbird. Um, I want everybody that's joining us that might be new to our paint nights is we have got Dylan here in the studio and he will be on answering any questions that you guys have. We can talk back and forth. We just want you guys to have the most successful paint night possible. So if you guys have any questions or you're not sure what supplies or what paint I'm using, put that in the chat and Dylan will get back to you so that again, you guys can have the most successful painting hour um, to get a really beautiful painting completed. So first thing I wanna do is let you guys know what supplies that I'm using. So we always use anyone that's new um, to one of our paint night lives. We always use our Let's Paint Live kit and our Folk Art Matte Acrylic Let's Paint Live kit is fabulous. Um, it's Folk Art Matte Acrylic, which is my favorite acrylic paint, but it is also all of the colors that you would need to create all of the paintings that we do, all of the paintings that you can access um, in our library that have been done in the past, and all of the paintings that we're gonna do in the future. Um, so it's a great gift. Mother's Day is right around the corner. Um, but also for the person you know that loves to paint. You get the brushes, you get all of the paints, and again, it's what we use for all of our live painting classes. Okay, so if you have the Let's Paint Live kit, you have everything that you need. If you're shopping by the supply list that was available on our class, I wanna run through those paints really quick with you. Okay, you're gonna need wicker white and licorice, white and black. You're going to need thicket and lime green, which is a really dark green and then a lighter lime green. You are gonna need our lavender, two pinks, and I've got bright pink and baby pink. You're gonna need pure orange, and then two beautiful aquas. One is aqua and one is Dutch aqua, and you can see one's just kind of a gray, lighter aqua, and one's a true aqua, and, oh, and navy blue. So those are the colors that you are gonna need. And I always say, because Dylan's probably getting a question right now, if you do not have these colors, or if you don't wanna use pink at all and you want a coral flower, or you don't want purple at all and you want a royal blue tail for your hummingbird, use the colors that you want. Steps are the same, techniques are the same. Make the painting, um, make the painting your own. I am working on a 10 by 10 canvas Again, if you want to do something that's taller and taller and skinnier, if you want to do something that's little, the techniques are the same no matter what size canvas that you're working on. And then, as I mentioned, if you have the Let's Paint Live kit, which if you don't get it, um, you get a beautiful set of 10 brushes. And I just want to show anyone out there that is not using the Let's Paint Live kit, the specific brushes that you are going to need. So you're going to need a base coat brush. Um, it happens to be a three quarter inch, but if you've got a 10 or a 12, anything for a good base coat, you are going to need a 10 or a 12. That is a number 12. I'm also going to pull out the number 10 flat. And then you're going to need something smaller. You can pick the number six from the kit, the number two in the kit. I just want you guys to have a variety, small, medium, and large, so that we can do all these techniques from tonight's painting. I put on the list a chalk stick, and your chalk stick can be white or yellow or pink or purple, anything that you have laying around the house. That's how we'll apply our pattern. 
And then I also call on the supply list for a palette knife. I love a simple plastic palette knife. They come in different shapes, different handles. Any of the techniques that we do tonight can be done with any basic palette knife. And if you don't have it, if you're new to this and you don't have a palette knife, don't worry. You'll still have a beautiful painting. All right, and then always the basics. Water, paper towels, and a palette, whether you're using a paper plate or palette paper, but a place to apply your paint for your painting. And one more thing, and a blow dryer. And the reason, you guys, that we use a blow dryer if you're new to painting with acrylics, the reason why we love them is they dry super quick. You can layer colors. Um, you can get shading and highlighting. You don't have to wait for that really long dry time if you were using an oil-based paint. But because we want you to have fun and have a finished painting in one hour, we do cheat and use the blow dryer. Okay, so do we have any questions, Dylan? No, everybody's excited Yay. to paint. Okay, guys, so I will try to leave this original painting kind of in there so you guys can see it um, and we'll reference it for sure put it put a message in the chat if you want me to reference this um, but the first thing we're going to do to get started is we are going to base coat our canvas with navy blue and there is no right or wrong to this you're just going to get a nice even consistent coat i'm going to use my largest flat brush and you are just going to base coat your canvas now what I do like to say to people is we love to use these stretched canvases that don't have any staples, they don't need to be framed, or they can be framed. After the class, what I like to say is do to the sides what you've done to the top, especially if you don't want to mess with getting an expensive frame. So do to the side what you did on the top, but we're not going to do that in our class today. So you can see the sky blood over to the side, the leaf, blood over to the side. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just do to the edge what you've done to the top. Okay, so I'm gonna base coat just the top of my stretched canvas. Your base coat needs to be even, uh, but it does not have to be perfect. What we wanna do is work on a dark color as opposed to the white canvas. So if you don't have a perfect base coat, don't worry, don't go back and do a second coat. Just get a nice even coat on there and also not any areas that are really thick because we are gonna use our blow dryer to dry this because we definitely wanna be working on a dry base coat. I'm gonna get a little bit more for the bottom But you guys can see I'm not doing anything to the sides of my canvas just because we're going to focus on our painting for the one hour. But after the class, go back and do to the sides what you do to the top. So you'll base coat it first and then you'll do all the, sec the same techniques on your edges. Okay, you can see Folk Art Acrylic Matte covers beautifully. I've got a few areas that aren't perfect coverage. Do not worry about that. Just get your base coat on there and then dry it with the hair dryer. I think that's completely dry. 
a little bit more right here. Okay, so a dark base coat is for me my favorite thing to paint on. I think it's easier to shade and highlight. Um, it goes quicker, you see it kind of on a, di on a different level. Um, and you also get what I like best about it is you get all of this dimension. Kind of a heavy outline on the birds, kind of some movement in his wings. You get all the dimension of these little um, flower strokes because of the base coat being dark. So it's just something that I really love um, to teach people how to do. Okay, so once your base coat is dry, applying the pattern. And this is always the spot where we start to get some questions. Um, we, we, I should just say me, because a lot of, of our instructors um, provide you with patterns. It's all depending on what we're painting. I try not to always provide a pattern. And the main reason is, one is the base coat, um, and two, if we, if I feel if you supply a pattern, people apply their pattern exactly like the pattern, as they should, but then they end up kind of color book painting and just really like their coloring. And so they're not learning the techniques that I um, want you guys to learn, and then your painting doesn't have this loose abstract um, elements to it. So that's why I do not always provide a pattern but don't be nervous here's what we're gonna do you need your chalk stick and what I always tell people is look at the elements look at the little bird not like a bird that's tricky and hard to paint but as shapes that are very familiar to you so his head is a little circle his beak is just a long line his body is almost like an eye and the shape of an eyeball his wings, you'll see that we'll do those because those are with the palette, so those really don't even require a pattern. But again, his head is like a little circle, his body is like a little eyeball or even a long oval. When you break it apart like that, it almost becomes something that you're not now having to know how to draw, you're just having to apply those basic shapes. So what I'm gonna do first is I am just gonna kinda mark with an X where I want my first bird and then I'm gonna mark with an X where I want my second bird. And you guys, if you wanna do one bird in the middle, you want your birds looking at each other and their little beaks touching, again, have fun with it. So this bird on top, we are gonna practice drawing a bird on this little one first. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make sure you guys can see this, his little body is like an eyeball. I am gonna draw an eyeball. So there's a little eyeball. The great thing about chalk, not a pencil or not a pen, is you can just rub it with your finger and start over. Okay, so that's my little guy's body. And then his head is a circle. So I am literally gonna just place a circle on top of the little eyeball. If you wanna kind of see it or feel that it's turning into a bird, you can always rub with your finger or a paper towel. Remove any of those lines. And then you can see that his little beak kind of comes to a point. So all I'm gonna do is make that little section of the circle where his beak will be. And then I'm gonna represent his beak, but don't do it perfectly because we're gonna layer colors. You just want an area that represents that long skinny beak. So for now, he's a bumblebee. And then his tail really isn't even a shape. It comes off kind of like a closed fan off the end of his little body. If you choose to, you can kind of make an irregular bottom, but we're gonna do that with a palette knife so you don't have to. So then for his little wings, the first wing is just kind of a very soft line that curves a little bit to the right. And I'm just gonna start on the top of his body and just curve a little line, barely going off to the right. And then his second wing I'm just gonna curve that a little bit to the right. He's not a very cute bird yet, but it, see how easy with shapes, a circle, a curved line, an eye, you can get placement 
for a bird. You don't have to know how to draw, but you've got the elements there to get started painting. If you want to do the details of his wing, you can just kind of fan that out, a very irregular edge, and same with this long wing, if you just want to represent, so you kind of have better placement. You can erase the lines if you want to just be more confident and make it one element as opposed to the individual shapes. But then you've got a little hummingbird. I'm going to plump up his little belly a little bit. And one thing about the chalk, I'm erasing it just so you guys can see the composition, but the paint will go over it beautifully. And if you don't erase it at all, it will be fine. Okay, so we have got a little hummingbird. I am gonna do the exact same thing over here. What I always tell people, I am not comfortable drawing or painting like this. So I turn my canvas to whatever makes it more comfortable. So I'm gonna turn my canvas just a little bit so I'm painting my bird going, or I'm drawing my bird pattern going in this direction. And I'm gonna do that little eyeball shape I'm going to get rid of that X just so it doesn't confuse anybody. I'm going to put that little circle right on top, on top of that eyeball. I'm going to represent his little tail with just two lines coming off the end. I'm going to make just a, a jagged line to end his tail. I'm going to draw his beak, but again, not perfect, just for placement. And then I'm going to do just what I did on that first bird. I'm going to kind of, what's the word, Dylan? I don't even know. I'm going to elongate that section of his little face where his beak will be. But still, you guys, basic shapes. Circles, a line for the beak, a little squished oval or an eye for his body, two lines, and then complete it with a jagged line for his tail. So now that I know he's there, I'm going to add that curved line for his first wing and that curved line for his second wing. Okay, there's my little hummingbirds. All right, and then for the flowers. The flowers are all they're doing is filling the area around your birds. So if maybe your birds are bigger and you just want one flower, really just get a read on your canvas. I know I've got space up here I wanna fill and space down here I'm gonna fill. And I'm really not gonna apply any more than placement. So I'll do a little circle to represent this flower, another little circle to represent this, and then I'll just make it, so it's not a polka dot, I'll make an irregular circle right there. All that is is placement for these strokes that we're gonna learn. I'm gonna do the leaves, and you can view that as a triangle. So I'm going to do a little triangle there and a little triangle there. So those are those two leaves. And just because I want green somewhere else, his tail's a little bit longer than the original. So I'm probably not going to add one there, but I've got room over here. So I'm going to add a little green over there. And then the same up here. I've got a lot of open space. So I'm going to do just an irregular circle. I'm going to do a leaf that kind of comes off up here on the top, one that comes off over here, and maybe one that falls off the canvas. I love to have elements of your painting fall off the edge of the canvas. Okay, we've got ourselves a pattern. But Dylan, do you guys have tons of questions? No, I think everybody's enjoying watching Yay. along. And um, just a reminder, uh, yeah, right now on platonline.com, the uh, Let's Paint Live kit is out of stock, but you can find it on Amazon. So I'm making sure that I post that in the links if you guys are interested in this kit. Perfect. Okay, guys, so now we are going to get paint onto our palette. Always wicker white. And I always tell people, Less is more. You can always add to your palette, but you're not necessarily going to put what you squeeze out back onto your or back into your bottle. So wicker white, lime green. We're going to start with our birds. A little bit of the bright pink and a little bit of the lavender. And I'm going to use a number 10 flat brush. 
And to base coat everything on our canvas, we're gonna use the brush without any, any water in it. If you got water on it, that's fine. Just dry it on your paper towel. And all we're doing now, you guys, is base coating with a dry brush technique. So I'm gonna go into the wicker white. I'm loading my brush, but you don't want too much on there because you don't wanna cover up the navy. So wicker white, and all I'm gonna do is almost, almost like you're dusting or polishing the first part of your pattern with the white. You can see that I'm following the chalk line. I'm not outlining it completely and getting a solid line. No water, I'm just scrubbing color onto the bottom of the chin and the belly of the bird. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And you want that, I want you guys to just see, I'll hold it up. You want the navy blue to show through because what that does is it just gives us that really pretty texture. You can see I don't have a perfect line there. I'm just, this is really just base coating. I'm not gonna clean my brush with water. I'm gonna go right into that green and I'm gonna do the same technique on the top of the bird's body. Less paint on your brush is better because you can always go back and add. But if you get a full base coat on your little bird, you're gonna lose all of that navy blue and that's what you don't want to do. I'm gonna do the top of his little head. Overlapping that white where the white and the green meet. Nothing's perfect yet. We're gonna layer a lot of colors, everyone. Now we're just getting kind of color and placement. So the top of the birds are green. The bottom, like kind of their chin, their neck and their belly is white. I still haven't gone in the water. And you can see, this is what I love about the chalk stick. Once you paint over it, the paint almost eliminates the pattern for you. So you don't have to work at covering up any type of pattern like you would if you used a pencil or a pen. Okay, now I'm gonna go in the water, clean that brush, but also remove as much water as possible on a dry paper towel. And I'm gonna take that same brush into the lavender and I'm gonna do the top side of the wings. So I made a line for the top side of the wing, but then I'm just filling in really loose with color. Same with this little one on the side. This is just our base coat, so don't worry if it's a little darker, a little lighter. We'll go in and add some more color as we keep layering everything. The key to this whole thing is making sure that you've got the navy coming through and that you've just got a lot of dimension by using this dry brush technique. I'm doing his whole tail and really just where his tail ends you don't even have to follow your line as much as just kind of feather out the brush to create the end of his tail not going in the water at all So there we've got kind of the base coat um, for our little birds. All right. I'm actually gonna go in the water just because I forgot to add white right there on his eye. So I'm just gonna go back into that wicker white and just do that right there. 
I'm also going to take the wicker white and do just the top of his beak. Not all the way down because that we're going to do in black. I don't think birds have noses, so what is that? Where his beak starts. I'm going to go into that green and just soften the line where the white and the green come together. Okay, so our little birds are base coated. Now I'm going to get my number 12 flat brush. If you're comfortable with the 10, keep using that. And now we're going to base coat our flowers. So we are going to use the light pink, the bright pink, always wicker white, and a little bit of our pure orange. And everything that we are going to do to layer and create these flowers if you guys have another color that you love, maybe you want a red flower or more of a magenta or you like more of this hot pink and less of this pastel, technique is the same. Just pick the color that you like the best. I'm going to separate him just kind of in my mind into a flower there, a flower there, and a flower there. I'm going to start with the baby pink. Same dry technique, no water. And I'm going to do a stroke that is very random. I'm going to do it like this just so that you guys can see it. I'm almost tiling or mosaicing simple um, straight brush strokes. I'm not doing it in a row like this because that will create a pattern. I'm not outlining, but I'm just randomly applying a very basic brush stroke, still no water, just to place my first layer of color. So that's the light pink. I'm going to go into this bright pink, not cleaning my brush. I'm going to do it slow at first. So you guys can see I'm just jumping around that space. I'm not doing it like this. I'm not doing it like this. You want to be really random so that you don't create a pattern. And just like on our birds, you want a lot of that dark navy blue to show through. It looks funny at first because you've got really a, um, a loose, irregular design that doesn't make sense yet, but this is really just our base coat. I'm going to go up here to this flower. I'm going to do the same thing with the bright pink. And then I'm actually going to take that same brush into the baby pink. You can overlap your first color. You can see how beautiful the colors blend with the folk art acrylics. Go right over your chalk line. You don't want a polka dot. You don't want a perfect circle. You want each stroke to create, you know, a really soft, irregular petal edge. I'm picking up more of that baby pink and just doing a second coat right over the top. You can overlap onto your bright pink. And then over here, I love the orange. I'm going to get a little bit of wicker white and a little bit of that pure orange. Equal parts white and orange till I get the desired orange that I want. I want it a really soft pastel. Still haven't gone in the water. And I'm going to just add some of that on this third flower. Also, as you're doing that, Kirsten, uh, we've got a few com compliments, so uh, great instructions. And then uh, someone called out the slip slap strokes and said oh. <laughs> they fell in love with this way of painting with the pastel bunny, so now they're back working on this. Oh, I love that. I Years ago, someone said slip slap. I hadn't said it yet today. I think once I say it, I don't stop. But it is a great technique. You're, that's what you're doing. You're going on both sides of your brush. Let's see if you guys can see that. I'll go really slow. You're going on both sides of your brush. You're going on that side doing a stroke, then you're just flopping to the other side, and you're just bouncing around. And it really is a fun, easy way to paint. I'm going right into the hot pink. I did not clean off. See, this is the magic of it. This is what I love. I didn't clean off the orange. 
So you're seeing just a little bit of that still in the hot pink. Rather than blending and mixing a bunch of different colors that um, would be different for everybody, by not cleaning your brush in the water, you're able to just create those colors really naturally. I love to go into wicker white, same dirty brush, and do the same technique. It kind of makes the colors pop, creates a highlight, and just adds some dimension to our petals. So I'm just going in the wicker white with the same, same brush. It's still got pink on it. It's still got that light orange that we mixed. But you guys, the key to this still is see how much navy is coming through and see how the texture of the canvas when you're using no water is also coming through. That is the look that you guys want. Okay, so that's our base coat. We'll go back and add more, but make sure you've got, like right there, I know I want a little bit more of this baby pink. Make sure you've got enough color, but not complete, like the finished, the finished painting, but enough color to create a really nice base coat. I'm liking this hot pink. I'm going to add a little bit more than I did last time. Oh, Add more to your palette whenever you guys need it. Okay. I might add, again, I'm loving this hot pink. I'm going to add a little bit more on my little flower on the top. Okay. I'm going to clean off that brush. I actually think I'm going to get my number 10, which is the brush that we used on our bird. Everything that we do tonight, you guys, once you clean your brush in the water, just use a dry paper towel and get it as dry as you can. All right, now I'm going to add our dark green to our palette, which is the thicket. I've still got some of that lime green on there. Add lime green if you don't, and also make sure you've got some wicker white. There we go. And we're going to do the same technique for the leaves on our flowers. The green will be hard to see, so I'm going to add a little bit of white so you guys can see it. At home, you'll be able to see your thicket on the navy blue, but with the lights in the studio, it's kind of hard. So I'm gonna add a little bit of white just so you guys can see. But all I'm doing is that same dry brush base coat. Even though they're leaves and they have more of a defined edge, you still don't want a perfect edge because you want all of the styles for the birds, the petals, the flowers to be similar within your painting. So don't do a hard, solid edge, even on your leaves. And I'm just going back and forth in the thicket, the lime green, and a touch of wicker white to base coat. Making sure that the navy is, is uh, definitely coming through all those colors. We're only using really two greens and white and look at all of the different colors you get in there. Working on the dark is almost like you're blending, you're shading, you're highlighting. It all is kind of happening, of course, in an abstract way um, because of the dark base coat. That's what I love. And a lot of people ask during these classes, does it have to be navy? It could be black. It could be dark, dark, dark burgundy, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, really anything, any dark color, so that you're just painting in this style as opposed to on a white, on a pastel. 
Okay, guys. So you should have everything except for your sky pretty much base coated. Now what we're going to do, you can use your largest flat brush that we base coated. If you're more comfortable with that, you can use your number 10 or your number 12. I'm going to use a number 12. And you're going to get your aqua and your Dutch aqua onto your palette. And make sure you still have wicker white. You're always going to have wicker white on your palette. And we are going to do the same thing with the sky. And the only advice I have for this, because people always seem to ask, is when you're doing your background now, so your entire background of all of your design elements, you want to stay consistent with the slip slap. Um, you don't want to pick up Dutch Aqua and start outlining your flower, outlining your leaves, outlining your bird, because that will dry on your painting and you will see that. So you want to do the same irregular technique. So I'm going to show you guys right up here what I mean. You're not going to outline your leaves. You are going to just do that same slip slap. See, now I'm going to say it all the time. Pattern around your leaves. Picking up paint as you need it. And I also always recommend that you jump from this corner to this corner to a little bit in the middle. The reason you do that is as you use your brush, you guys know from doing all this that the paint comes off differently every time you do a stroke. So if you stay up here, you'll build a pattern. But if you do a few strokes over here, a few strokes there, a few strokes over here, it's going to stay very loose and very abstract. Okay, I'm going to show you guys again. Don't outline your flower like I know you want to. Don't outline that because you'll see that in your, in your final painting. You want to do that same dry brush technique, just bumping up to the element that you're trying, that you're trying to create the background for. Does that make sense? Dylan's always my best crit or my best critique. Everybody's He'll complimenting the way you're explaining things. So I think it makes okay. a lot of sense. So don't outline. Even this little bird's tail, I'm going to show you guys. Don't outline. Just do that same. You can start on your design and kind of pull away. But you definitely want to jump around the canvas. Looks a little weird for now, but we're going to do that to fill in all of the navy blue. On the little guy's body, you can do one stroke to start you, but don't create a pattern. Okay, so that was just Dutch Aqua. Now what I want you guys to do is always pick up Dutch Aqua, but maybe every now and then pick up a little bit of that dark Aqua. Don't clean your brush with water. You'll see how beautifully those two colors blend together. I like mostly the Dutch Aqua, but every now and then I'll pick up a little of the dark. And what I love, and this is going to be hard, hard to explain, but I think easier to show you guys. Maybe I'll do it on this one. So let me find the perfect spot. Right there is the perfect spot. See how there is still a pretty solid line of my navy base coat between the sky and the leaves? You, I love that. I actually prefer that because it adds another element of dimension. You can see it in a lot of areas around the flower, around the leaves, even on the little bird's neck. That is because you're not completely base coating where the design element meets the sky. You're leaving not, not the same everywhere, not consistent where you make a pattern, but you're leaving just enough navy blue or your base coat color to kind of accent your design element. See it right there on his little belly? Look at my little hummingbird. He's, ex he's got a little extra cute belly. But you want that navy. It's just a really fun way to create your background by not completely separating your bird or your flowers or whatever you're painting from your background. 
that's doing it right there perfect every now and then guys just like we did with our flowers you can get a little bit of that wicker white if you want a darker sky more of a summer sky with the really light blue whatever colors you want but you're just going back and forth aqua dutch aqua and white and always making sure that some of that dark background is showing through and the texture of the canvas the texture of the canvas might be my favorite elements that you're creating when you're doing this painting technique and don't don't overthink areas like look at this my little bird's tail is really close to there I went over the purple I went over the pink just to separate the two but I didn't go back and worry about following that pattern exactly a little more Dutch aqua over here I love to do the wicker white on top of a dark color because see how you get that gorgeous texture of the canvas it looks like linen it's so beautiful if you ever have too much of one color like I've got a lot of white right there focus on another side that'll dry in just a minute and you'll be able if you wanted to add more aqua I kind of like that section with the bright white I like it so much that I'm going to go over here and add some wicker white to this top corner. Let's see, where do I? I need a little bit more around his wings. A little more wicker white to the palette. All right, I think that's it for the sky. Okay, so now whatever color, Dutch Aqua, whatever's on your brush, let's define, first time we're using our chisel edge, which is the flat part of our brush, let's just go in there and kind of define his beak. I'm gonna zoom in for oh, everybody. Let's see if I can get my hand out of the way. And all we're doing is, you can see our chalk pattern, we just drew a straight line and we've got our sky kind of randomly bump, bumping up to the little guy's beak. I'm just going to go in with my chisel edge and kind of define his little beak. Perfect. Oh, doesn't have to be perfect. And if you don't want to do this, you're confident in doing it with the black. That is perfect as well. But I just wanted to kind of get the sky a tight edge using the chisel edge to define that. Alrighty, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to go back to that. Actually, you know what? We're going to go to our number six flat brush. And I am going to kind of repeat what we did with this smaller brush, but with not covering the whole area like a base coat, just a few of the areas to make the colors a little more vibrant. So I went in the lime green. I'm not doing his whole body like we did with the base coat. Just a few areas to make that green a little bit, a little bit brighter. Same brush, I'm going to go in with the white. Soften where the green and the white meet. Same slip slap technique. A little bit of white on his belly. I'm going to do the white on his belly, but I'm not doing the entire section. I'm just doing it to some. And then I'm softening where the green and the white meet. I'm going to dry off my brush on a paper towel. I'm not even going to go in the water. And I am going to add this cute little accent that's on the chest of the bird. So I'm gonna go right into that bright pink 
and I'm just going to do a few right over that green and white. That right there shows you how wonderful Folk Art Matte Acrylic works. We're putting pink on top of green, white, and already navy blue, and you don't lose the beautiful pigments in the color. That's why acrylics are wonderful, because they dry, but it's also why Folk Art Acrylics are wonderful, because a lot of paints you would just get kind of a muddy mess, but you are not getting a muddy mess. I'm doing the same dry brush technique, so you can see a little bit of white through there, you can see a little bit of green, and it just looks textured and beautiful, and you still have that beautiful color. If you want to add a little bit of wicker white to soften it where it meets the white, you can. I'm going to go over the pink just a little to soften that little accent. Okay. Once you've done that, we are going to get our number 10 flat brush. Make sure it's clean, but dry. If you have lavender still on your palette and white, we're going to do the same thing with his wings. I'm going to start with wicker white and a touch of lavender to make a little bit lighter value of what our base coat was. And I'm going to do that. Oh, I got a little wet, a little water on my brush. So I'm going to dry that off. So two parts lavender with one part wicker white just to get a lighter purple. And I'm going to do that same technique on the underside of my little bird's wings. But not creating a line overlapping that original lavender that we did, but just adding another value of this purple. Same thing on this little bird. And you know what? Same thing on his tail. That's just purple, white, purple and white on navy, and you get so many different values with this technique. Okay. Now, you guys, what we're doing now, a lot of people, every time we do this technique, people stop here and they say in the comments, I love it just the way it is. That is really a great painting. That, you could add a little black for his eye, a little black for his beak, and that is beautiful. If you want to stop there, absolutely. We're going to add just a little bit of detail to kind of complete the, complete the composition, but I want you guys to see that that, just like it is, with details on the beak and the eye, would be a beautiful painting. Okay, so I'm still using my number 10 brush, and what I am going to do is make sure I have the pink the white, the orange, and the wicker white on my palette. And I am going to do strokes that are a little more specific than our base coat to cover our flower areas. So I'm going to load my brush with pink, a touch of baby pink, but mostly the bright pink. And I want you guys to see that what I'm doing is, let's see if they can see this, Dylan. I'm starting on the chisel, which is nothing more than the flat edge of the brush. I'm starting on the chisel, smashing that brush down and lifting up. So that is a, I think a comma stroke. I'm starting on the chisel edge, smashing my brush down and lifting up. Oh, what if I get closer? Can you guys see that? And because our technique is so loose, these do not have to be exactly this stroke, but what I'm doing is starting on the chisel, pressing down and lifting up. You can just see it's kind of a defined stroke. So I am going to do a few of those jumping back and forth just like we did before in the pink, the white, the peach, overlapping my sky a little bit. Always making sure though that I don't cover up the work that I did, all of the base coat, the navy, the texture. I'm just adding a few of these strokes to define my flower. 
I'm going to make that soft peach, two parts white, one part pure orange. Start on the chisel, smash down, pick up. Start on the chisel, smash down, pick up. But they're not perfect strokes. For any of you that have done paint night with Andy, you know he would die if he was taking this class. I'm positive he's never logged on to one of mine because his strokes are beautiful and perfect every single time. Um, we are just doing something a whole, whole lot easier, as beautiful, but just a unique technique. So I'm not covering all the work that I did. I'm just adding a few petals that are more defined than our base coat. You can add a few white, which would be the area where the sun is hitting your flower. But see how your base coat is still the dominant color, all of the details. It's what makes the dimension. This just defines the top layer of your little flower. I feel like Bob Ross. I, Dylan, how many times have I said little and cute? It's okay. It's good it's to have right, a signature. Huh? Like I said, people really like the way you explain things. Oh, I'm glad. Okay, so I've got lots of detail, but still a loose abstract design. I'm going to jump up here to my flower on the top. Same brush, same technique. Start on your chisel, smash down, lift up. Actually, I'm going to add a lot of wicker white to this one. And baby pink. I'm not getting rid of that line around my flowers, but I am overlapping every now and then out into the blue that is the background. All right, I am going to dry that on the paper towel. I'm not even going to put that in the water. And I'm going to go into that lime green. Wicker white is what I use the most of in every painting. A little more wicker white on my palette. And I'm just going to define one side of each of my leaves with a lighter color, same technique. That would kind of represent the side of the leaf that's getting more of the sun. But then I'm going to go right into the thicket and soften that edge. I don't want any firm lines in any of these elements. Oh, Kirsten, you'll love this. Sue said, very nice. Looks pretty easy having my nine-year-old grandson do this painting for his mom for Mother's Day. Oh, I do love that so much. I absolutely love that. Both the mom element, mm -hmm. the painted gift element. Dylan, tell me if you think this is true. I hope it is because it's true for me. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't want it to be for you because that's... When you craft or make stuff, do people ever make you stuff? Never. Right? No. Never. They Be think you just do it you, all. You don't want anything handmade. But is that true? No, that's the exact opposite. Right? We would love handmade right. things. Right. But do we, you, we never get it's anything handmade. It's a good point. Handmade. Creatives like handmade things too. Right. Even if they're like in their eyes bad. Oh, then we love it more. Right. Then we love it more. I think people are probably most often um, intimidated. Right. But yeah. we, we are here to tell you yeah. that even though we create stuff, we mm -hmm. love stuff made for us. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I had to throw that out there. So I'm glad she's having her grandson make it for her mom. Okay, so we've added details to our flowers, details to our leaves. We've got color, more bright color in our little hummingbirds. You guys, we are going to dabble with the palette knife. So the palette knife is an option. If you want to use it, great. If you don't, and again, you're done. You can add an eye and a beak and you're done. But I do want to show you guys really quickly the technique. Where I use the palette knife on here is mainly the wings, maybe a little bit on the bird's body, 
But that is where I want you guys to see the difference in this technique and this technique. Again, you don't have to do it, but if you choose to, make sure you've got paint on your palette and I am gonna dip into the lavender. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna scoot the lavender right here so you guys can see it. And I'm gonna scoot the wicker white over there so you guys can see it. Ignore the green. And the only key to a palette knife is you wanna work on the flat edge. You don't wanna work up like a brush or you don't wanna bend it like it will bend. You wanna keep it flat and you wanna be really light handed like you're just trying to skim butter onto your toast. You don't want to mash down and drag because then you won't get um, the result that you want. So I'm going to dip just into that lavender. I'm just kind of raking on the side of my paint. If it's all the way to here, that's perfect. If it's less, if it's loaded less, that's perfect. Don't overthink the palette knife. I'm going to start on this little bottom wing and all you're doing is adding a little bit more texture with um, almost a defined edge. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So you're just going to, at first, you're going to just drag your palette knife from here to the tip of your wing. But remember, you're not mashing down. You're simply skimming across that, across that wing. And see how irregular the, the application of the paint is? That's what you want. I'm going to do that again on the little top wing. You're just skimming across that base coat and see how it, let's see if the, maybe the sheen will show, but see how it just has a mind of its own, the way it applies paint. And then what I'm going to do is load it one more time and I'm going to create for this hummingbird, the movement in his wings by just pulling that palette knife off of the base coat that we've already created. So I'm loading the end of the palette knife and I'm just pulling paint off the end of that little guy's wing. I'm gonna pick up a little white because I think you guys will be able to see the white better. And that's creating the movement of his, of his wings. Can you see how with a brush that would be merely impossible for me, but you get that really organic, soft texture because of the palette knife. I'm gonna do the same thing on his tail. I loaded it with purple. I'm gonna just skim across his little tail. I'm gonna pick up a little white, just barely skim across his tail. You can see it's, oh, there we go. Oh, see, that's perfect. It's just adding texture to his tail. Oh, I can't find the tail when I'm not looking. Okay. Then I'm going to load the purple and I'm just going to pull off very lightly, barely pushing down. I'm going to pull some of that color from the palette knife to the end of his tail. And all that does is creates the movement, the texture, and gives you a little bit more dimension to your bird. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna just skim across his little wings. I gotta stop saying little. I'm gonna skim across his wings. I'm gonna do the same on his tail. Remember what I said, move the canvas. I'm better pulling towards me. So move the canvas so you're working with the, way, the direction that's comfortable. And I'm just pulling paint. I'm going to do the same thing on his wings. I'm going to kind of pull the palette knife off the edge, overlapping that aqua or Dutch aqua, whatever color you used for your sky, but you can see it doesn't muddy at all. I loved the palette knife for the hummingbird wings because the hummingbird wings, they have so much movement in nature that it's just kind of giving them a different element of texture. Okay, if you want to, to clean your palette knife, all I do is simply do it on the paper towel. I don't do water at all. A great way to add a final element is to take wicker white, load your palette knife, but kind of pounce it on your palette paper so you don't have a ton of paint on there and then just skim it across an area. 
very lightly. That was perfect. See how the texture in your base coat, the light application gives you a little bit of detail, almost looks like feathers. So I'm gonna load white, but pounce on my palette paper so I don't have a ton of paint. And I'm just gonna lightly skim on my hummingbird's body. Mm, I love that, that actually works. Sometimes it doesn't work perfect, but that's perfect. They just look like little details or little feathers that me personally, I could not go in and paint, but that just gives you that dimension. You can do the same thing. I'm gonna go into the thicket. If you wanna just skim across one or, or all of your leaves, you're just gonna get that little bit of palette texture that's different than your dry brush texture. And sometimes, I'm just gonna show you guys, don't do it if you don't want to. Sometimes I love to do it even in my background. So I'm scooping up that Dutch Aqua, loading it on my palette knife. There's no right or wrong. You don't want paint like that dripping off your palette knife. You wanna kind of scoot in and scoot off onto your palette paper. You want enough, but you don't want, um, you don't want it dripping off of there. And I love to do this technique just on the edges. Oh, again, it did it. You never know. See how it just creates another element of texture. I'm actually going to go in that Dutch Aqua and sneak into the white and I'm going to do it right there. You're barely touching down. And do it over there. Same rule applies. Less paint on your palette knife because you can always go back and add more. It'd be tricky to take it off of your painting. But see how you guys don't have to do the palette knife, but see how it just adds just a little bit of extra texture. Okay, everything is done except for the final touches. So I've got a number two flat brush. I'm gonna get the tiniest amount of licorice. Oh, let me shake that up. Tiniest amount of licorice. And for this, I'm actually gonna dot, a lot of people like to use the back end of the brush. You could dip that into your licorice and use that to dot your eye. A lot of people like to do that for placement because you know you're gonna get that perfect circle if you don't feel comfortable using the brush end. I cannot get licorice on the back of that brush. There we go. But you can also use the bristles, just load licorice and don't do a perfect circle. I always tell people especially when you're painting this style with all the loose elements and texture, don't do a perfect circle because your feathers aren't perfectly defined, your petals aren't perfectly defined, so you don't wanna go in and create almost like a cartoon eye. Oh, if I can be still enough. See how up close is terrible, they look like terrible birds, but see how it's not a perfect painted circle? Then what we're going to do is we're going to do the same with our beaks. We're just going to base coat, especially if your sky or your background went into your beak. Just go in there and create your little bird's beak. And then I'll show you what we're going to do to soften it, which is our last step. Whenever we paint like this, Okay, so you've got your bird's eye. It's a little bit harsh, right? It's like a black dot on this beautiful loose painting. Two ways to do it. I'm gonna take my palette knife. Let me make sure my black is dry enough. It doesn't have to be perfectly dry, but using such little paint, it's pretty much dry. I'm gonna take my palette knife and I'm gonna go into the wicker white and I'm gonna load it, but then I'm gonna tap it on my palette paper Again, you don't want too much, less is more. And I am just gonna skim that palette knife. I mean, I'm barely touching down, but skim that along the beak. 
barely touching down, you guys. I'm not pushing at all. I'm just letting it just ever so lightly touch it. It's almost like where the light would catch it. It just, it magically drops just enough paint to soften the beak. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing with his little eye. I'm gonna put just the littlest amount of wicker white on my palette. I'm not gonna skim it, I'm just gonna touch the black. I'm just gonna touch down on the black. And that softens your little bird's eye, his beak, to make the whole picture complement, have the same type of texture, the same loose edges, and the same look. All right, Dylan, do we have any questions at all? I don't think so. Well, that's I think good, we had a I few hope. people painting along, and just a reminder that you can find this uh, video after the live is over. It's here, it's going to live on our Facebook page and our YouTube page. Yep. So, everyone, thanks for joining us. I hope you had a great time. We are here, same time, every Monday, also the first Thursday of every month. Everything is an hour. So many different teachers, so many different techniques, and we hope that you join us. Oh, and Please share your paintings. We love to see what you guys have created. So hashtag plaid crafts so that everyone can see your beautiful paintings. Thanks everyone for joining us. See you next time. Bye.